Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla. Known in the United States as 1995 birth version, this Godzilla is meant to represent Godzilla Jr. as he appears at the end of Godzilla vs. Destroya, after Godzilla melts down and the radiation is absorbed into Jr. Many wonder if they need another Heisei Godzilla, so let's take a look and see whether or not he's worth adding into your collection. Despite being a straight repaint, wow! Does this version of Godzilla look stunning? Yes, we all probably have at least two Heisei Godzilla action figures in our collection by this point. But this one has a certain flair the others simply don't have. The detailing by Sakai is brought out well in these natural colors, and it simply captures the Heisei look perfectly. Beginning with the head, you can see the fine details really well. The only paint disappointment on this figure would be the mouth. Similar to the Diamond X Plus reissue of the GMK Godzilla, the red is sort of bleeding out of the gums a bit, and it does look a bit, well, bleh. Also, there is a minor paint chip on mine in the upper right side, but you really have to be looking for it, and that's the only way you'd be able to see it. Other than that, everything looks really well done, and you can even see the eyes here. Simply superb. There's a very subtle blue coloration to this guy, but sadly you can't see it too well under normal lighting conditions. It does add some flavor to the sculpt, and it blends in very well with the blacks and the grays. The claws look wonderful and are a nice, accurate color which we haven't truly seen yet from Tamashi Nations in this department. And here's a quick look at the feet. Finally, what has me most excited about the looks, the dorsal plates. They look true to not only the prototype, but also the Heisei era suits. It's the small things like this which make me simply love this figure. When it comes down to it, this figure is simply beautiful. I already have four other Heisei Godzillas, and seeing this in hand, I'm proud to say it's number five. If you have the original release of the 1995 mold, Burning Godzilla, then you already know what to expect out of the articulation. However, due to different materials, there's just a little bit more, say, leeway with some of the joints. To begin, the jaw is on a basic hinge. It opens and closes very easily. However, something you'll notice right away is that the mouth closes all the way on birth version as opposed to Burning Godzilla where it was just sort of open like that even if you close it all the way. Now the neck, there are quite a few ball joints in here which gives you a lot of range of movement which is always nice to have. The shoulders are attached to the body on a ball joint so you can get him to lift his arm up, rock around a little bit if you want it to, swivel, everything you would expect out of a ball joint. The biceps are attached on a ball joint to the shoulder sculpt, so you can get them to swivel around and get them to rock a little bit. And same thing with the elbows. You can get them to swivel at two different points, both to the bicep and to the forearm. So you can get a typical hinge motion. You can get them to spin around independently if you should so wish, like that. And finally, the hands are attached to the wrists on ball joints. Moving down to the main body of Godzilla, you have his ab crunch, which is on a barbell style ball joint, which enables you to get a point of articulation from this part of the sculpt and from Godzilla's chest. So as you can see here, you can really get the top half of him to move. And it does like to pop off easily because the plastic used for this Godzilla, mostly the joints and whatnot, it's a softer plastic. And unfortunately, some of the connections are a bit loose. You can see the style of joint there. So stuff will unfortunately pop off, but it doesn't mean it's broken because, as you can see, you just pop it back on. And then also the waist joint here, it uses the same style of joint and, again, likes to pop off, but just pop it right back on. And you can get a lot of range of movement here. It's much better than the burning version of this figure, but at the same time, it's 
identical with just a little bit more give. Think of this as the Comic-Con explosion version of the 94. Same engineering, same sculpt, but because of the different materials, you get a little bit more bang for your buck. Moving down to the legs, the thighs are attached to the hip on a ball joint. Again, the barbell double access style, which I'll show you here. Here's where the thigh goes on, and here's the main portion of the body. And they're, it's very easy to adjust, as you can see here. So if you have a gap right out of the box, like I did on mine, you know, you got that gap that so many people complain about, pop the thigh off, move the ball joint up, and there you go. Gap be gone. The knee, it is basically a hinge. That's about all you're going to be able to get out of it. And then there are ball joints in the shin slash calf area. And the feet are attached to the ankles on ball joints. So you're going to be able to get just the basic ankle rocker movement out of that. So that way if you want Godzilla to take sort of a splayed stance like that, it can be done. <sighs> Finally, the tail. Unfortunately, there were no new joints added to this, and it's the same tail design that's been used since the first Godzilla release all the way back in 2011. So you're going to have very minimal ball joints throughout the tail, going from the base all the way to the tip, in which this last part here is one solid piece. So don't expect Godzilla 2000 Millennium or Godzilla 1964 type of articulation out of the tail. You're going to be able to get basic movement, but still, it's much appreciated. But you'd think they'd be able to work in a few extra joints there. So overall, the articulation for this guy is great. If you already have the burning version, you know exactly what to expect except for the fact that the softer material will allow just a little bit more range in the main body. Alongside his great looks and amazing articulation, this Godzilla comes with some accessories, and they're pretty sweet. Now the Heisei Godzilla is known for having closed hands close to his chest, but if you want a little bit more expression, Tamashii Nations also included these sort of splayed hands, and swapping them out, it's easy, but you need to be careful. All you have to do is grab the currently attached hand and just slowly pop it off. Like so. And you'll notice the ball joint there is very small, which is why I said you need to be careful. So that way when you go to put it back on, you don't apply too much force. I would highly suggest heating this up before you pop it on. And like so, it pops on just super easy. But the extra hands are not the only accessory this Godzilla comes with. Finally, with this Godzilla, we see the return of effect parts, and this one comes with the beam effect that came with the 2011 release and the first Godzilla effect set, but this one is in a more so translucent pure red than the other previously released beams. And just for a fun comparison, here are the other color variations of the normal beam that Godzilla uses. You have the one that comes with the first effect set here on the left, and you have the one that comes with the 2011 release on the right. And just for fun, here is the red spiral ray, which comes with Fire Rodan. Note that the base is still the one from the first effect set release. Here he is with the red spiral ray. Here he is with 2011 releases blue beam. And here he is with the red beam from the first effect set. So as you can see, this Godzilla pretty much comes with everything you would need for an expressive Godzilla. You get an extra set of hands and this one beam effect. The others were just so you can see how it looks. Very odd they decided to go with red instead of blue, but I guess that makes sense given this is supposed to be Godzilla Jr. grown up. And, you know, from burning Godzilla he gets the red beam, but I'm sure that there are a lot of people who would have appreciated a blue beam instead. When it comes to sizing, you should already have a good idea of how big this Godzilla is. But for some of you who would still like to see a size comparison, don't worry, I've got you covered. Here he is alongside some of NECA's kaiju offerings from Pacific Rim and Godzilla. Here he is alongside some Ultra Acts. Getting into the SH Monster Arts line, here he is alongside the Destroya family. And finally, here he is alongside some other Heisei Godzilla action figures, going from 
the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2011 release, the NECA Godzilla 1994, and the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1995, of which 1995 birth version is based off of. So as you can see, it's your pretty average 6-inch scale Heisei Godzilla. You should already know what to expect in terms of size. So, buy him now, skip him, or wait for a deal. He's beautiful. Simply astounding. Small issues at mine with the mouth, but if you like good-looking Godzillas, this one is definitely for you. Articulation is top-notch. Though the softer plastic for the joints isn't doing him any favors, with stuff popping off frequently. Yay! Return of effect parts! Just what we needed. I was initially against this guy, but I began to love the prototype, and the final product is phenomenal. If you need a generic Heisei Godzilla, this is the one for you. Do not hesitate to pick this guy up anytime soon.